Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, Senator representing Kogi West, Senator Dino Milaye, to spend next 39 days in police custody following his arraignment in Lokoda Magistrate Court over alleged unlawful possession of firearms. Death toll in Zamfara attack rises to 20. State government seeks security surveillance of affected areas by the military. Federal government promises to transform the nation's health sector through technology. A Senate president pledges 1% of 2018 federal budget for the sector. And fierce sandstorm wrecks havoc in India, kills over 100 and injures many others. On business news tonight, Central Bank of Nigeria signed $2.5 billion bilateral currency swap agreement with People's Bank of China. On sports news, all is now set for the draw ceremony of the Lagos preliminaries for Season 10 of the Channel's International Kids Cup. And from Abuja, the House of Representatives promises to pass the 2018 Federal Appropriation Bill next week. We begin tonight from Lokoja, the Kogi state capital, where the senator representing Kogi West in the National Assembly, Dino Milaye, has been remanded in police custody by the magistrate court till June the 11th. Mr. Milaye, who was brought to court on a stretcher, was denied bail by the magistrate following his arraignment for alleged conspiracy and unlawful possession of firearms. The police had conveyed the senator to Lokoja, the Kogi state capital, in a helicopter after he was rearrested on Wednesday in Abuja, Mr. Milaye had been granted bail by the Abuja Magistrate Court to the tune of 90 million naira with two shirts and like sum for attempting to commit suicide and escape from police custody. But he could not achieve the same feat at the local court. There's no need. There's no confusion there. The other is very clear now. It's not well, and he has been at the National Hospital, Abuja. So um, the, the court order is that um, he should be remanded, but under the custody of the Inspector General of Police, who should ensure good and adequate medical facilities for him. So are they taking to Abuja now? Uh, we, those are matters that are administrative. We do not know whether they are taking him to Abuja now or not. Um, we'll we see how it plays out. Does he have to the, remain under custody till June 11th? Uh, no, no, no. I'm, we are already taking steps to get him out on there. And uh, you, will see, you will hear the result very soon. Meanwhile, the Speaker of the House of Representatives is unhappy about the arraignment of Senator Dino Milaye on a stretcher. Honorable Yakub Dogara has criticized the way and manner the police has handled the matter and is asking them to respect the law governing arrest and prosecution. He was reacting to a personal explanation by a lawmaker, Sunday Karimi, who accused the Kogi state government of prosecuting Senator Milaye. The speaker told the police to first consider and focus on the senator's health before prosecuting him. Senator Dino Milaye was carried in an ambulance to Lokoja and he was carried with a stretcher to the court. He's been presently arraigned in the court in Lokoja. What is happening to Senator Dino Melaye can happen to you or anybody. It can happen to me. Senator Dino Melaye is facing persecution from the state. And if we are saying that we have to operate by the rule of law, Nigeria has to be seen and operating by the rule of law. Um, all I can say is that nothing must happen to the senator. If anyone in this country has committed an offense, the law is there um, for the person to be prosecuted or arraigned before the court within the ambit of the law. But um, I don't think the law will support a situation where someone is in a dire health situation 
and uh, he's been around more so that the person is a senator. I don't think a distinguished senator of this country or a member will run away from trial. So my admonition to the security agencies is to do everything possible to ensure that his life is secured first before prosecution. The prosecution cannot come at the expense of debt. And still on the embattled senator, senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Falano, has described the arraignment of Senator Dino Milaye in a stretcher as unacceptable in a civilized society. In a press statement received by Channels Television, Mr. Falano says that the police action is degrading and humiliating as it violates the fundamental right to the dignity of his person as guaranteed by sections 34 of the Constitution and section 7 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act of 2015. Mr. Falano says, quote, even though the senator has my sympathy, it is indistinguishable that he has only been given little dose of the humiliating treatment that is daily meted out to the flat sands and jet sands of our unjust society by the Nigerian police force and other law enforcement agencies in Nigeria, end of quote. He is, however, asking the National Assembly not to treat the senator's case in isolation and wants them to call for the release of Sheikh Ibrahim El Zagzaki and former National Security Advisor Colonel Sambodazwiki in line with the valid and subsisting orders of competent courts. Mr. Falano also wants the National Assembly to take advantage of Senator Dino Milaya's case to adopt and domesticate the United Nations minimum standard for the treatment of criminal suspects in Nigeria without any delay. No fewer than 20 people have been reported killed in clashes between cattle rustlers and local civilian militia in Zamfara State. The Zamfara State Commissioner of Information, Mr. Mohammed Sanda, says that 13 of those killed in the attack are cattle rustlers, while the remaining seven are local civilians. He explains that the militia and cattle thieves fought a gun battle on Tuesday through Wednesday in Fankashi village of Maru district. There was an attack by civilian militia against the armed bandits, that is cattle rustlers. So, in all in all, 20 people were killed. And uh, only seven are, are from our civilian militia, but the others are from armed bandits. And the same happened around the Tantado area, one place the Kwon and the more local government area. On, on Tuesday night, uh, the security agent went to the area. The enforcement was sent there. The police, the soldiers, and other people were sent here study because the thing happened in the night on Tuesday. 200 police, the Dokra, and uh, uh, this uh, Benuwari, it was announced by the IG. Like, what happened now? The uh, IG uh, redeployed 200 policemen. That is good, mobile. That is good. When you get to the enforcement, Maybe time to time. What we want now is the Air Force. We are pleased with the government to send the aircraft so that they can monitor the area. We do it once and for all to finish everything. This is what we are hoping. In the meantime, calm has returned to Kaswung Gwenjo area of Mubi town in Adamawa state following last Tuesday's twin bomb blast at a market and a mosque in the town. But the death toll from the attack has now risen to 29. The state governor, Muhammadu, Jibrila has deployed a delegation to the town to assess the extent of damage and to commiserate with victims and their families. He describes the attack as satanic and called the security operatives in the state to expedite action on ending the crisis. Mubi town in Adamawa state, all seems calm, people going about their businesses. But the atmosphere at the popular Kaso and Guangzhou market appears different. Shops are under lock, goods all covered, roofs shattered with cracked walls, cow parts and clothes litter the floor. This is the scene of the twin bomb blast where 29 people were killed and several others injured at a mosque. The area cordoned off and security men on guard. But how did this happen? 
We had just set our goods on the table in the market, near the mosque, when we heard a loud noise. The people rushed to see what was happening when somebody came in a starlit car. He came out and laid flat on the ground. Before we knew it, he detonated a bomb he was carrying, killing a lot of people. The police are confident that the insurgents have been defeated, but want residents to work with them. Our hope and prayer is that it will not happen again, but definitely we will put in our best, to the best of our ability to make sure it will never happen again. The lawmakers are not happy with the incident. They believe government and the people need to do more. If you see somebody that you suspect, or you see somebody that you don't know, or you see somebody uh, that is strange in an environment, what you need to do is to report to the security agencies so that they can take action. Governor Mohammed Jibrila is at the Federal Medical Hospital in Yola to commiserate with the victims of the attack. He condemns the incident, calling for more cooperation from residents. Operating with all the security apparatus, so I would like to uh, generally to condemn what happened and uh, no any human being will accept this and uh, it's unacceptable for myself and the entire government and people of Adama State. This latest suicide attack is the second in six months. The development has thrown the town into panic despite assurances of safety from security agencies in the state. And still talking security in north central Nigeria, Governor Samuel Otum has given lawmakers in Benue State the assurance of a renewed drive by the federal troops to flush out armed herdsmen from Logo and Goma council areas. The governor gave the assurance during a question and answer session at the State House of Assembly where he was summoned by the lawmakers to explain the measures being taken to stop the killings across the state. He says that the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukuruburate, is leading the newly deployed 1,000 Joint Security personnel in the offensive to Goma and Lugo with a focus on all the troubled spots across the state. The theatre commander of Operation Lafayette Major General Rogers Nicholas, has raised concerns over the proliferation of non-governmental organizations in Borono State supplying false information about the military operations to international organizations. According to the military officer, there are over 126 NGOs in Borono State with only 37 registered. General Nicholas, however, says that he is not bothered with reports by international organizations because the military will continue to operate within the confines of the law and rules of engagement. Our correspondent, Amakao Kafo, reports. This is a usual workshop at the National Defense College. This time, one of the speakers is the commander of Operation Lafi Adole, Major General Rogers Nicholas, who gives an overview of the military operations and challenges in the Northeast. As participants listen with rapt attention, General Nicholas expresses concern over the proliferation of NGOs in the Northeast and its effect on military operations, but not without a warning for them and their international counterparts. I'm not too concerned about what Amnesty is saying as long as we are operating uh, within the compass of the law. And what these people do is to get local NGOs and use them to perpetrate their criminal activities, and then when you grab them, they say they are not the one. As I speak to you, there are 156, 156 NGOs in Medjugorje, only, out of which only 37 are registered. So I've given them three weeks, all of them to register or pack out of Medjugorje. They have that choice. I've told them three weeks after which I'll pack them out of Medjugorje and grab them out of the uh, IDP camps. Because what they do is that anybody just wake up and go to Medjugorje and just establish an NGO. I've never seen that happen. For an NGO to come to Medjugorje and rent accommodation for 15 years and pay for 15, 10 years means that for him, that, that crisis must continue for the next 15 years. The commander who is advocating the deployment of more technology in the operations, have says it is investing in civil military relationships to curb the rising cases of suicide bombing and other activities of the insurgents in the Northeast. In the last few weeks, because of the intensity of suicide bombing, I've decided to employ over 100 local informants, provide them with some logistics like bicycles, small, small handsets and other facilities so that they can be able to reach me as quickly as, quickly as possible. Because uh, these Boko Haram people pass through so many communities in their way to Medjugorje or other um, 
uh, town. So we are dealing with this, and the, the state security services, the civil defense, and the police have been very critical in assisting in this area. Nigerians will be watching to see the effect of this new tactics in curbing the activities of the terrorists in the country. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. In part two, after the break, security of journalists in focus as Nigeria joins the rest of the world in marking 2018 World Press Freedom Day. Please stay with us. <laughs>